Hi everyone, this is Ramalinga Prasad Kuppa. Welcome to my channel, Pharma World. Today's topic is dissolution test as per USP chapter 711. In this video, basic concepts of dissolution test as per USP are discussed. The viewers are advised to read USP chapter 711 for more detailed information. Purpose of dissolution test. Dissolution is the process in which the substance forms into a solution. By simple understanding, the dissolution process is dissolving the acceptable set amount of the active ingredient into solution. Dissolution testing measures the extent and rate of solution formation from a dosage form. So this test measures how fast or how slow the active should be released and how much should be re released into the necessary part of the body system to be therapeutically effective. The dissolution of a drug is important for its bioavailability and therapeutic effectiveness. When the active is made available in the body, it is useful for therapeutic benefit. Its significance is that it must be released from the product and dissolve in the specific part of the body for absorption into the bloodstream can happen for a drug to be effective. Drugs act in different parts of the body for therapeutic activity. So the dissolution test determines the amount to be released at acid stage in digestive system or more alkaline stage in intestines. The acid stage analysis will reflect this. The buffer stage will reflect the release at alkaline state in intestines. If the drug should act in alkaline stage, the limit of the drug release at acid stage analysis prescribes that the drug release should not be more than the specified amount. Let us see the prescription of USP chapter 711. Dosage unit is defined as one tablet or one capsule or the amount specified. There are four types of apparatus in use. The type prescribed in the individual monograph should be used for analysis. Apparatus 1, the basket apparatus. Floating dosage forms, capsules are generally tested with this type of apparatus. Apparatus 2, paddle apparatus. This method is used for many dosage forms which sink to the bottom of the vessel without any problem. Apparatus 3 is reciprocating cylinder. Reciprocating cylinder apparatus is utilized for drug release profiling from extended release products. It can quickly and easily expose products to mechanical and physiochemical conditions which may influence the release of the product. Apparatus 4 is a flow through cell. This is used for special purposes like lipophilic forms, suppositories, suspensions, etc. Let us see the procedure. The apparatus should be set as per vendor specifications and recommendations. The apparatus should be installed and qualified as per the requirements. The equipment should also be calibrated as required 
before starting the analysis. Stated volume of specified dissolution medium should be taken into the clean vessel within 1% tolerance. The dissolution medium should be within this range, not more than 1% variation. For example, if the volume is 900 ml, the volume taken should be between 891 ml and 909 ml. The dissolution medium should be equilibrated at 37 plus or minus 0.5 degrees Celsius. The water bath in which the vessel will be immersed should be filled up to the mark and maintained at 37 plus or minus 0.5 degrees by suitable heating system and circulation system. Then only the vessel with the dissolution medium also will be maintained at that temperature. One dosage unit should carefully be placed into the vessel taking care to exclude air bubbles and operate immediately as prescribed in the individual monograph. The dosage unit should be slowly slipped into the vessel, never drop from a height. It can create air bubbles. The instrument should be operated immediately at the prescribed RPM and time. The sample should be withdrawn as prescribed in the individual monograph and perform analysis as directed. Generally, the ranges will be at 20 to 30%, 50%, and 80%, etc. Samples should be withdrawn and analyzed as prescribed in the individual monograph. Where multiple samples are withdrawn, it should be compensated or replaced with equal volumes of fresh dissolution medium. This point to be noted carefully. When samples are withdrawn, there is a loss of dissolution medium. So it should be compensated. The fresh replacement should be from the same dissolution medium and maintained at 37 degrees Celsius. But if the volume withdrawn is less than 10% of the total volume, it may not be necessary to compensate. Addition should be done carefully along with the shaft or slowly slipped through the sides. If you add at once, there is a potential for improper mixing. The extra addition can create other problems of mixing and can give inconsistent results. Since there is also a provision to correct for the volume through a calculation, it may be acceptable even if the dissolution medium is not replaced. The fresh medium should be maintained at 37 degrees Celsius when compensated. Since the medium is maintained at 37 degrees Celsius during the entire run, it is important to note this point. The vessel should always be kept covered to avoid any evaporation losses. Sampling at specified interval should be taken in such a way that it is from midway between the surface of the dissolution medium and the top of the rotating basket or blade not less than one centimeter from the vessel wall. There are specific cannulas for this purpose to sample exactly as prescribed in this. It may be interesting to check once whether the cannula samples the way it is supposed to be. The resolution medium as directed by the individual monograph should be prepared between 20 and 25 degrees Celsius. This is important point to note. pH adjustment for any buffered dissolution media should be adjusted to plus or minus 0.05 units of the set value. 
dissolved gases should be removed by heating the media at about 41 degrees while stirring continuously and filter immediately under vacuum through 0.45 microns or less filter this is to avoid any dissolved air bubbles this is a recommendation as per usp chapter 711 for single time specification is prescribed the test may be concluded in shorter period if the requirement is met even though the run is longer if the sample meets the dissolution criteria at specified time sampling it is acceptable to conclude the run earlier time for taking the sample for analysis at the specified time should be within 2% of the prescribed time for pool sample equal volumes of filtered solutions of 6 or 12 individual specimens withdrawn and combined the procedure discussed so far is for sampling from individual bowl and evaluate to see compliance as per table 1 of usp 711 there is separate acceptance criteria immediately after the same table 1 for pool sample evaluation the pool sample will be taken as the test specimen this determines the average amount of active ingredient dissolved in the pool sample this procedure is applicable for immediate release dosage forms and extended release dosage forms let us see how delayed release dosage forms are analyzed essentially delayed release medications are designed to release the active ingredient from the dosage unit later after taking it which can help control where it should be released in the body example small intestine this is another stage of dissolution testing try to understand the intent of this stage the drug will be released in the specified part or organ of the body small intestine is after the digestive system in the body so the drug should get released in the intestine and not earlier this is usually done to prevent the medications from being broken down too early in the digestive system which reduces the active ingredient potential and has side effects the digestive system is acidic so the drug product is designed with an acid resistant coating to avoid breaking down in the digestive system because of acidity so the evaluation should be two stage evaluation first the acid stage where it should be established that the drug is not released in the acid stage in the second stage which is relatively alkaline the drug should get released this is evaluated in the buffer stage there are two stages of evaluation that is one at acid stage and the other at buffer stage so in acid stage the acceptance criteria will be not more than specified percentage to establish the integrity of coating on the drug product in buffer stage the drug is released so the acceptance criteria would be not less than as prescribed in the individual monograph there are two procedures method a and method b for the two stage evaluation in method a 750 ml of 0.1 normal hydrochloric acid solution is used 
as dissolution medium this is acid stage and then tested further with another 250 ml of 0.20 molar tribasic sodium phosphate at ph 6.8 plus or minus 0.05 this is buffer stage in method a after the acid stage sampling the vessel is topped up with 250 ml of buffer and further evaluated in method b 1000 ml of 0.1 normal hydrochloric acid solution is used as dissolution medium acid is drained after the acid stage analysis and replaced with 1000 ml of ph 6.8 phosphate buffer so in method b after the acid stage evaluation acid is drained off and replaced with buffer for the next stage of evaluation apparatus setup should be done as prescribed in the previous slide that is slide number 6 let us see the other methods apparatus 3 reciprocating cylinder and apparatus 4 flow through cell are also can be used for dissolution testing most of the routine analysis is carried out by method 1 and 2 only rare cases these methods are used however japanese pharmacopia does not accept the procedure using apparatus 3 usp chapter 711 indicates this information as footnote 3 paddle over a disc is generally used for transdermal dosage forms rotating cylinder type apparatus is also used for transdermal dosage forms reciprocating disc type is used for non disintegrating type of dosage forms let us see on interpretation of data for immediate release dosage forms and pool sample the acceptance table 1 should be used for evaluation as reference for extended release dosage forms acceptance table 2 should be used for delayed release dosage forms acceptance table 3 should be used for acid stage and for delayed release dosage forms acceptance table 4 should be used for buffer stage i hope that this brief explanation is helpful to understand the intent of dissolution testing intricate details of analysis are not focus point of this video so please read usp 711 carefully to understand fully on details of analysis thanks for watching for more videos please do subscribe like and share thank you